this part, we'll be going over common variable immunodeficiency. Common variable immunodeficiency, or CVID, is a heterogeneous disorder involving immune dysfunction of B and T cells and dendritic cells. The characteristic immunologic defect is the inability of B cells to differentiate into plasma cells capable of secreting all immunoglobulin types. CVID is not a single disease, but rather a collection of hypogamma globulinemia syndromes resulting from many genetic defects. In a small subset of patients, specific molecular defects have been identified, although in most cases, these causes are, as of yet, unknown. CVID is defined by the following. Age-specific reduction in serum concentrations of immunoglobulin G in combination with low levels of immunoglobulin A and or immunoglobulin M. The presence of B cells. Poor or absent response to immunizations. And an absence of any other defined immunodeficiency state. Common variable immunodeficiency is estimated to affect as many as 1 in 25,000 individuals. There is some evidence of higher prevalence among individuals of Northern European descent. CVID is sometimes diagnosed in childhood, but more typically after puberty. B cells are phenotypically normal, but are unable to differentiate into immunoglobulin-producing cells resulting in low immunoglobulins of all classes. The following are clinical manifestations of CVID. Infections at 94%. Hematologic or organ-specific autoimmunity at 29%. Chronic lung disease at 29%. Bronchiectasis at 11%. Gastrointestinal inflammatory disease at 15%. Malabsorption at 6%. Granulomatous disease at 10%. Liver disease or hepatitis at 9%. Lymphoma at 8%. Physical examination of patients with common variable immunodeficiency may be normal or there may be signs and symptoms of chronic illness. For example, failure to thrive or growth retardation in children or weight loss in adults. Other common abnormalities include nasal discharge or congestion, signifying chronic sinusitis, scarring of the tympanic membranes, and or digital clubbing, signifying chronic pulmonary disease. The initial laboratory evaluation of patients with common variable immunodeficiency involves the measurement of immunoglobulin levels, the demonstration of impaired responses to vaccinations, and the exclusion of other causes for these abnormalities. Quantitative immunoglobulin levels should show low levels of immunoglobulins G, A, and M. Serum immunoglobulin levels are markedly abnormal in patients with CVID. Serum immunoglobulin G should be below the lower limit of normal and generally under 400 mg per deciliter. In addition, immunoglobulin A and or low immunoglobulin M should be below the lower limit of normal. There will be a decreased number of plasma cells. Although flow cytometry of leukocytes is not required for diagnosis, patients with CVID may show abnormalities. Most patients with CVID have normal numbers of circulating T and B lymphocytes. Patients also show a poor response to immunizations. The diagnosis of common variable immunodeficiency can be assigned to a patient over the age of 4 who demonstrates all of the following characteristics. Significantly reduced total serum concentrations of immunoglobulin G. Low immunoglobulin A and or immunoglobulin M. Poor or absent response to immunization. And the absence of any other defined immunodeficiency states, since CVID is a diagnosis of exclusion. As for treatment, 
immunoglobulin replacement therapy may be administered either intravenously or subcutaneously. The usual initial dosing for IVIG in patients with CVID is 300 to 600 milligrams per kilogram every three to four weeks with or without premedication. Patients who are actively infected at the time of the initial infusion are more likely to experience adverse symptoms during infusion. So, when possible, we try to treat the infection first, then initiate immunoglobulin. Premedication with diphenhydramine and acetaminophen is commonly used for those who are prone to medication reactions, and in some cases, a glucocorticoid, such as IV hydrocortisone, is also given. Generally, after the first two or three infusions, premedication is no longer needed. One may also repeat the initial dose, that is, the entire 300 to 600 milligrams per kilogram, in a few days or one week later, if the patient was clearing an infection when the initial dose was given. The half-life of immunoglobulin is approximately 30 days, although variability among individuals exists. Steady state levels are usually achieved after three to six months of therapy, and we measure trough levels of immunoglobulin G beginning six months after the first dose and every six months thereafter. An alternative to IVIG for maintenance therapy is SCIG. This usually is administered weekly or every other week, depending on body weight and immunoglobulin requirements. There is also a subcutaneous preparation that is facilitated by hyaluronidase, which allows for infusions of larger doses and thus can be administered every three to four weeks. Antibiotics may be administered prophylactically as well as for the treatment of acute infections or exasperations of chronic infections. Patients with CVID should undergo all age-appropriate cancer screenings and additionally be monitored for signs and symptoms of lymphoma. These include constitutional symptoms, solitary nodules, expanding lymph nodes, other masses, and focal pulmonary findings that fail to resolve with treatment. The following four graphs demonstrate the B cell flow cytometry for common variable immunodeficiency. The top left graph shows the patterns of normal B cell differentiation in peripheral blood based on immunoglobulin D and CD27. The top right graph shows similar staining in a patient with CVID demonstrating reduced switched memory B cells. The bottom left graph shows normal expression of CD21 and CD27 on B cells, cells gated on CD19. And the bottom right graph shows elevated CD21, low expressing CD19, and B cells in patients with CVID and splenomegaly. Here are the autoimmune disorders that are associated with common variable immunodeficiency. Dermatologic disorders include alopecia totalis, vitiligo, and psoriasis. Hematologic disorders include immune thrombocytopenia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and autoimmune neutropenia. Endocrinologic disorders include hyperthyroidism, and hypothyroidism. Rheumatologic disorders include vasculitis, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and Sicca syndrome. Gastrointestinal disorders include inflammatory bowel disease, primary biliary cholangitis, autoimmune hepatitis, pernicious anemia, and atrophic gastritis.